Good morning, Emmanuel. Welcome to worship today. Welcome to those online. I'm Pastor Mindy, and it is a joy to be here with you. It's been a long time since we've all been together like this. So welcome to worship. We are excited to celebrate together on this Palm Sunday. As we begin our time of worship together, um, I have two things for you, and then I'm going to hand it over to Missy, who has a couple more announcements. Um, Because it's Palm Sunday, we celebrate that together by um, sending you forth with palms. So on your way out this morning, you can pick one of those up at the back door. If you didn't see or don't receive my emails, um, I sent out an email this week letting you know that our youth director, Chelsea Dinger Fry, will be resigning. Um, She'll be with us through um, the middle of July. And so we celebrate uh, her ministry here. Um, She is moving on um, to another youth position, so we wish her well and we pray together for her um, and for us as a church as we discern kind of our next steps together. So I wanted you to be aware of that and invite you um, into a time of prayer with us. Missy? Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? First, I have to share, it is so great to have the bird's eye view again and like have all of you out there. This is just wonderful. So some additional announcements for you. Please keep in mind the 24-hour prayer vigil that will be happening on Good Friday, April the 15th. They do still have some slots open, so if you haven't signed up or um, you're interested in in being a part of this ministry, please do so. Um, We have sneakers for kids going on. Uh, This is our mission for the month of April. And it's a shoe drive for the local elementary schools. Out in our uh, narthex, you'll see uh, they've got shoes tacked up and there's more information out there for you. Next week is the big week, it's Holy Week. So every day there's something going on. And um, please look at the back of your bulletin, it lists everything out for you. And if there's anything you're interested in participating in or helping out with, I'm sure Pastor Mindy will be more than happy to assist you with that. And the last thing that I would like to talk to you about this morning is Vacation Bible School. That is coming, and can you show me by raise of hand how many here went to Vacation Bible School when you were a youngster? Yeah, yeah, choir, yeah. So then, as you became young adults, how many of you helped with Vacation Bible School? Wonderful. So, and just in case you're wondering, my husband is back here keeping notes as to who used to help with Vacation Bible School, and we'll be talking to you. Yes. So, but seriously, um, June 13th through the 17th is Vacation Bible School. Our theme this year is called Concrete and Cranes. I can't think of a better way for us to support our young children and their growing minds and being able to cement, and I am using that, or concrete, I should say concrete, their belief and their, um, their values in Jesus. And so I encourage you to bring your children, bring your grandchildren. If this is an event that you would like to participate, because trust me, it takes a lot of people to pull off this week. And don't be afraid that there's, you know, you don't know how to do something because I'll help you. I I will definitely help you. And um, over the next few weeks leading into Vacation Bible School, we will be asking for your assistance in a numerous of ways, whether it be helping with teaching, with activities, maybe supplying food for the snacks. Um, So there will be sign-up sheets at the the Northwest desk, the welcome desk, and if there's you know anything you're interested in or you have questions, you're always welcome to contact me. I would ask though now that you please pray for us as we gather all the information and the items that we need in order to pull off this week. Um, 
in my heart, this is such a very important ministry for our children, and we truly appreciate any help and assistance that you can give us. Thank you. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this holy Palm Sunday. God, as we enter into worship together, we ask that you would prepare our hearts. And as we take this walk during Holy Week with you to the cross, that we would be focused and centered on you and your sacrifice. And may our worship here today be pleasing and honorable to you. In your name we pray. Amen. As you are comfortably able, I invite you to stand and join me in the call to worship. We raise our voices and wave with joyful hope the palms of deliverance and God's people. Our hearts are filled with expectation as we welcome the coming King. We receive into the crowded streets of our lives the one who is Savior, not only for us, but of all the earth. Let us join our voices together in song. As we sing about the children bringing forth a message this morning, we take a moment during the service to recognize the children here of our church um, and to present them with a Bible. So I'm going to invite Carol Armstrong, who is the director of our children's ministry, to come and share that now. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell it's been a while since I touched one of these. Um, we have, um, from before COVID, and now since we're back, we were doing a study of Explore Through the Bible, which takes the kids clear through the Bible from Genesis to Revelations in a three-year period. Now, all the classes are studying the same lesson every week, so as the kids move up, they don't miss anything, which I think is very neat about our program. This year, we kind of doing our, son, our discipleship time a little differently. The kids have three different stages they're in during that hour. Some of them will start off doing a craft, some with the lesson, and some with the video. And then they'll just rotate to the different positions. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that they've been working on. Our older kids, second grade through fifth grade, are doing these crosses which they can hang up once they're done. I'm amazed at how particular and how nice their crosses are looking at. I, I'll be truthful with you. Close your eyes, ears, kids. I felt the little ones, I wasn't sure how it was going to come off. But they've been amazing. That was their sample that I did because theirs is still drying downstairs. The younger kids, the preschool kids through first grade, are doing these crosses. This is one of the kids' crosses. And then when they got that done, then they could do the one with the flowers. Um, the older kids seen it, and they wanted to do it too, so all the kids are doing the crosses. And then last week, they were talking about Zacchaeus, and so 
we did their name tags with sand. Sorry, choir, I forgot you. <laughs> and then, of course, this one was up where you could see it. So at that point, there, we have, if all the kids came, we would have, that we have touched in the last few years, we'd have 38 kids here this morning. We don't have all 38 here due to different reasons. We have some that have injured themselves, <laughs> some of them who have been suffering with flu bugs and stuff going around. But I would like to invite all of our toddlers, that's one year old, on up through third grade to come up to this side of the room to get your Bibles. If the toddlers, their parents want to bring them up, they can, or we can take the Bible back to them. We know toddlers are a little bashful. <laughs> this is for Quinn. Renata. Kingston, Eris, preacher's getting a workout, <laughs> uh, that was Lucas, he's not here, Rowan, Those were our second through third grade and third graders. Um, Theo. <laughs> Peyton. Oops, I still have one more here. And Jace. Now, I guess I didn't say this before, but uh, younger kids got a beginner's Bible. And then the older kids got the deep blue Bible, which we have been handing to our kids over the years. So it's just been a continuation. And this should catch us up. <laughs> we are so thankful for all of the children in our care. And this morning we're going to pray over them um, before we send them back to their parents. So let's pray. God, we give you thanks for each and every child that you have entrusted to us here at Emmanuel. God, may the Bibles that they hold today bring to life your goodness and love. That they would come to these words and they would experience you over and over. And God, may each of us here be living examples for our children of your love and grace. God, may we continue to help our children learn just how much it is that you love them. In your name we pray. Amen. A blessing to have a church full of kids, right? 
All right, our scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. We are exactly one week away from Easter. But a lot is going to happen between now and then. Last meals, betrayals, death. Today ushers in the excitement of Jesus, the Savior. But the shouts of Hosanna will change quickly to shouts of crucify. So as we start this journey to Easter, I'm inviting us to join together in a time of prayer this morning, focusing our hearts and our minds on Jesus and on the story that is about to unfold, the story we're going to hear sung in just a few moments. This holy week, this journey to the cross and especially to resurrection deserves our full focus and attention. So we're going to take a moment together this morning to pause, to pray, to reflect, and then we will listen to the story of Easter. So would you join me now for a moment of prayer? God, we come this morning hopeful and expectant on this Palm Sunday as we remember and we celebrate your son Jesus entering into the city for the last time. On this joyous day, we look ahead because we know the week ahead is not joyous that there is grief and betrayal and heartache coming. Again, we know that a week from today, in the midst of the difficulty, the hurt, the defeat, the resurrection is coming. So God, may our hearts be focused on you this holy week that we would reflect and we would remember the sacrifice that you made on our behalf, that we might have life, and not only life eternal, but full life here and now, that we would enjoy your gift of Jesus to us, that we would be a reflection of your love and your grace and your forgiveness. So God, may our hearts be ready to once again celebrate resurrection, that we would recognize our need for your sacrifice. God, may your spirit speak to each of us, and may we be ready to listen. May we receive this story, our story, 
once again as we prepare to celebrate resurrection. In your name we pray. Amen. there is a mystery in the mercy of God and the key to that mystery is found in the heart of the Father. There's good news. The Father loves us. Jesus came to redeem us and in that redemption the loving and merciful heart of the Father is revealed. He longs for us to bring us home to the place where he dwells. And so as planned from the beginning Jesus came Oh, sing aloud and rejoice. Exult with all your heart, for life has come and has taken away the judgment against you. He has broken the bonds of slavery. The Lord, the King of the heart, in our midst. So come home, come to the heart of the Father. For in the coming of his Son, Jesus, the Father, has opened with the gate of heaven for you and for me. He opened wide the gate so we could walk into all the joy and splendor of heaven. He opened wide the gate so we could walk into all the joy and splendor of heaven. He opened wide the gate so we could walk into all the joy and splendor of heaven. I will hire death than I could ever pay. He saw the dead I owe and came to make a way for me to know eternal joy. joy and splendor of heaven. He paid, I believe. He gave, I receive. He paid, I believe.
there is a dusty road that leads straight into Jerusalem. It's a road that Jesus has traveled many times before, but not like this. Not riding a donkey with crowds pressing in on every side. They shouted, listen, he's coming. The prophet who raised Lazarus from the grave, he's coming. The one who healed our sons and daughters, it's the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest, make room, make room for him. We've been hard pressed, haven't we? And presented, but Jesus, you earned me blindness, you cured our blindness, you give the legs with again. The manger is now three decades past. Jesus entered the world on a starry, silent night. Now he enters the holy city amid a cacophony of voices. Many are shouting praises when others are not even aware of his coming. Soon, these same people will shout condemnation. 
The calling on the master's life is about to be completed by his death. He fully recognizes the task. A crown awaits him, but first he must face Calvary. There is a debt to be paid and Jesus will pay it in full. What language can we borrow to give thanks for such a friend? Thank you. 
It is their last night together, their last meal. It's clear now, there will be no mighty army to claim victory over the enemies of God's people. Jesus' triumphant entry into the holy city now seems like years ago, instead of days, and it is to a table that Jesus leads his twelve, not to a war. It is at this table that they see the truth. Jesus loves them. He loves them with a mighty love, a love bigger than anything they've ever known. There, he offers himself into them the bread and the wine, his body and his blood. The weight of the mystery is overwhelming. This time is sure. Jesus will stand in the darkness alone.
Jesus fulfills his divine destiny, bearing the excruciating savagery of the Roman guards. They prepare for his execution, three nails and a cross. This man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, the friend of ruined sinners, this hire of the... A severe darkness covers the land. Let the whole earth tremble. The bread of heaven has fallen. How could the Son of God, the Savior of the world, end up like this? Every single moment that he transpired since the foundation of the world was prelude to this. Behold the Lamb of Glory.
The cross, the very instrument of death, now becomes the symbol of life. The crown, so magnificent, now becomes the symbol of just how far God is willing to go to redeem us. If there is no cross, there is no crown. And so Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being walked in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that no other, every man, that at the time of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue consider that Jesus Christ, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Thank you, choir. Let's clap again for them. Weren't they fantastic? Would you please stand with me? A lot of work goes into what they do. This is two years in the making, right, Bob? We've been working on this for two years. Uh, the last time they worked on this, we shut down. Um, so we are so glad to have our choir back. Thank you, Bob, for all of the work that you put into making this happen as we prepare to celebrate Easter. So again, thank you, choir and Bob. And so now may you go this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, holding this holy story in your heart as we journey from today to Easter. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.